Warning, do not watch this video unless you want to become a flat earther. You say, yeah, right, but I guarantee you that you don't actually know what we believe. And if you let yourself watch to the end with an open mind, you'll find out that it's actually you that's been hanging on a belief system, on a religion as it relates to the globe. You'll also develop a newfound respect for this group of people that support this channel and who are so willing to be called stupid, so willing to be looked at as idiots for simply questioning the narrative of what they're being told. Because the reality is, no one becomes a flat earther by seeing the floating pancake. Yeah, we think that's ridiculous too. We become flat earthers by studying and finding major errors in the heliocentric model and actively pursuing truth, which I guarantee you is harder than passively absorbing a lie. We probably actually know more about what you believe than you do. Remember, we used to be you. So trust me when I say that any objection that is currently or is about to arise in your mind, we've already dealt with ourselves. And if this thing was truly easily debunkable, none of us would still be flat earthers. Have you not wondered why someone would believe in something so stupid as flat earth? Why people don't mind being called idiots? Maybe it's because it's not that stupid. Maybe someone wants you to think it's stupid. Maybe someone is working really hard behind the scenes to make you think that we believe in a square pancake flying through the solar system that you could just step off of and in the nothingness of space. But again, I assure you, we think that's ridiculous too. Nor do we have anything to do with the Flat Earth Society. I've attended and spoken at conferences all over the US and Canada and met thousands of Flat Earthers and not once, never, have I met someone associated with the Flat Earth Society. That is an organization of half-truths and idiotic science, okay? We are simply people in search of truth, who hold empirical, measurable, repeatable science, as well as ancient accounts on a higher level than mere theoretical mathematics. And last thing before I get going, I want you to know that they are banking on you not questioning this. They're hoping to their God with a lowercase g that you do not look into this because they know if you do, you're going to have some major questions that unfortunately have no warm and fuzzy answers, which is why they've worked so hard to keep the flat earth, the perception of flat earth, as a theory that only morons could believe in. So sit back, relax, and I promise you will not regret it. As I mentioned earlier, it wasn't the words flat earth or the fact that the flat earth theory has all the answers because it doesn't. And it certainly wasn't the social consequences that drew us in. But for most of us, it was the questioning of the globe model, which ultimately brought us to flat earth. So here are some questions that reveal some things that I didn't even realize I believed in by believing in the globe. Why is it that even though the earth spins at 1,000 miles an hour at the equator, goes around the sun at 66,000 miles per hour, which travels through the universe at half a million miles per hour, which is expanding at over a million miles per hour, are we able to take a picture of the sky on the same day every year and never see changes in the stars, even for thousands of years? Why does Elon Musk say, you, you can, can tell, tell it's, it's real, real because, because it, looks it looks so, so fake? fake. That's because it does look fake. Look how the earth glitches out in the background, but the car doesn't. And see how the earth supposedly looks from the International Space Station, which is 240 miles up. However, this was taken from only 170 miles. Do you see an issue here? It's just like the Red Bull space jump in the Mythbusters episode that used downward facing fisheye lenses to create massive amounts of curvature. But the non fisheye lenses from the capsule in the cockpit show flat horizons, which concur perfectly with weather balloon footage more than 20 miles up. Which, by the way, 20 miles high is roughly the size of the bulge that should be in the state of Kansas due to it being 413 miles wide. Here's what 20 miles up looks like. That would be a large bulge for something that is supposed to be flatter than a pancake. And by the way, Kansas is only the ninth flattest state in the US. How many pieces of flat land does it take to make a ball? Why when we look at the stars in December, do we see the same stars that we see in June? We should be looking in two totally different directions. If ships sail over the curve of the Earth, why are we able to bring them back into view with high-powered lenses as if they merely sailed past the horizon of the eye's angular resolution? Why are we able to see things over long distances, which according to the formula for a ball with a circumference of 24,900 miles, should be thousands of feet below the curvature horizon? 
And now with infrared technology, we are seeing things that should be miles below the horizon if we truly lived on a ball. If Eratosthenes proved the Earth was a ball thousands of years ago with an experiment using shadows, why do experts say that his results should actually be the same on a flat Earth with a smaller local sun? If the sun barely looks bigger than the other stars from Saturn, why is it able to completely light it up so that we can see it from Earth? And if something merely the size of the other stars can do that, why is the back side of Saturn not lit up by the billions of stars on the other side? And why are there dark sides to any objects in the solar system? If moonlight reflects the warm light of the sun, why is moonlight measurably cold? Why is it warmer in the shadows at night when it's the exact opposite of what we experience in the sunlight during the day? How is it possible that our positive atmosphere sticks to this ball right next to the negative vacuum of space without a barrier in between? How is it that people claim to see lights in the sky that are the International Space Station and other satellites when they do not have lights on them? And due to their supposed distance off the ground, the sun wouldn't have the ability to reflect light off them, let alone the fact that I do not believe you could see a satellite, something the size of a pickup truck, 250 miles away even if it was lit by the sun. That's like saying you could see a vehicle in Oklahoma City while standing in Dallas. How is it we supposedly went to the moon 50 years ago, but now we can't leave low Earth That's orbit? The that we can go. Why are the pictures of Earth from space described as composite images, using ground-based observations and Photoshop to fill in the gaps? Why was all the original moon footage and telemetry data destroyed? Why is NASA constantly getting caught on live feeds with men in the background of models, harnesses on the International Space Station, and bubbles and scuba gear in space like they're filming spacewalks in a pool? Why is YouTube hiding true flat earth content and promoting the ridiculous false perception of the floating pancake? You're dealing with all these conspiracy theorists on your platform. So the, the first way is by demoting low quality content and promoting more authoritative content. And the second is by providing more transparency for users. So we're introducing boxes that provide factual information at the top of results that have shown themselves to turn up a lot of information that is counterfactual, such as searching for the earth is flat on YouTube, where you see a lot of your response is to put a box out. saying, nope, the earth is not flat. Correct. Okay. And lastly, if we are so sure about this spinning ball heliocentric model, why are experts saying things like this? So everything we know about the universe, what we're made of, galaxies, stars, planets, that's all right here. So according to this chart, we are 96% stupid. And just so you know, the globe side has complex answers to all these. But it's time you start evaluating evidence for yourself instead of simply accepting someone else's opinion of it. We all have the same evidence. It's your worldview and your perception of the source that determines your interpretation of that evidence. The experts are not any closer to the stars than you are. You have the ability to trust your senses and come up with conclusions for yourself. So what do flat earthers believe? Well, I'll caveat with we do not have it all figured out, nor do we claim to. However, we can prove that there are major issues with the globe model, and that is why we are searching for other solutions and other models which can support the phenomena and science we repeatedly observe. Well, this is the best representation I have so far. We believe the center of our motionless world is the North Pole, and an explorer or traveler can still circumnavigate this world from east to west or west to east by performing clockwise or counterclockwise circles around the North Pole. Antarctica is not a continent at the bottom of the globe, but rather a continental ice shelf and mountain range that acts as a shoreline that holds the waters in and potentially supports the dome above, so no falling off the edge. The sun, moon, and stars are simply lights in the sky. They are smaller, closer, located inside the Earth's system. They are not objects floating through space that are similar to the Earth. They are part of the Earth, so no comparing us to them. There are many things that people think disprove this model, thus concluding they live on a ball, and there's no way I can address all of them, but here's some of the most common objections. People say that other planets are round, but as I mentioned earlier, we believe that planets are just lights in the sky, not places you can go. Simply wandering stars that are part of our system, not outside it. Space as you think of it is a lie. 
People say there are no pictures of the edge. Well, that's because of the Treaty of Antarctica that does not allow for private exploration beyond the 60th parallel, upheld by the United Nations, whose flag also happens to be the map of the flat Earth. People say sunsets disprove the flat earth because we believe the sun stays at a constant height in the sky as it circles above our head, which is true. However, you'll notice on clear days with minimal humidity, the missing water in the atmosphere allows you to see the sun shrink into the distance as it moves away. It appears to go down just like the lights in this hallway appear to go down. However, if the lights in this hallway were considerably higher than the observer, they would appear to shrink very little as they moved away, and if we were to create some atmospheric magnification, they could even appear to grow as they approach the horizon, just as the sun does on humid days. And what about gravity? Well, to put it plainly, we don't believe in gravity. We believe things govern themselves based on density, buoyancy, and the electromagnetic force, all three things that are measurable and provable. Gravity, even though it is sold as a law, is actually just a theory and it's truly only needed to stick things to a ball or have that ball revolve around another ball. Newton himself had doubts about gravity and in fact, it has never been proven to exist. There was an experiment performed in which gravity waves were supposedly detected from two black holes orbiting each other a billion light years away. Just for some perspective, the sun is only eight light minutes away. So multiply that distance by 65,000 to get a light year, then multiply it by a billion, then turn out the lights because they're black holes. They claim that everything in the universe gives off gravity waves, including the moon, yet they did not detect it from the moon. They detected it from two black holes a billion light years away. They were supposedly distorting space time and the amount which they claimed to have detected this space-time being distorted was less than the diameter of the nucleus of an atom. So, please use your brains the next time you see NASA come up with a big discovery. Look how it's always accompanied with an artist's rendering or an image instead of a picture, just like this image of a black hole that they supposedly stitched together from multiple forms of data that just happens to look a lot like the cover of the Soundgarden album, Black Hole Sun. Now, the big question, why would somebody cover this up? Well, because the forces of evil cannot rule the original creation, the one created by God. They have to create an artificial one, a perception, in order to remove the true God from the equation, lifting themselves up to be gods. And they do this by creating a false reality, making people unknowingly exist in it, thus controlling them, making it possible for everyone, including the 99.9% .9 of people working at NASA, to unknowingly propagate the lie. And that perception is so powerful, it can make someone who is provably standing still tell you that they're spinning a thousand miles an hour. And someone who is standing right side up tell you that they're actually upside down. Now, I know you have more questions and we have the answers. And even though your heart may feel like you're hearing truth, I'm sure there are many objections that have arisen in your mind. Remember, we used to be you. We have already had to deal with those objections. Just don't let the projection of someone else's perception get in the way of your pursuit of truth. If you do, it only proves that you're under someone else's control. I pray that you take this seriously because the stakes are high. Don't let anything get in the way of your pursuit to truth because the truth will set you free. God bless. For more answers, subscribe to Woke Town, D-I-T-R-H, the Flat Earth Podcast, or download the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app.